Back at the griddle again and another fried rice video. In fact, we're so excited with the exception of the healthy fried rice that I did with tofu. Yeah, right. Been about a year since we've done fried rice. And since we've done it, to, since we've done fried rice together. Correct. For the channel, we do right. fried rice all the time. And we thought, you know what? Let's simplify it. It's uh, really easy. We got some tips to uh, make this really easy. Yeah, we just want to share five tips that will help you make really good backyard fried rice. Sure. You want to see how we knock this one out? Stick around while we dig, dig in. in. So we are back at it, super happy and excited again to cook. Surprise, I'm but, super excited about to cook. <laughs> but this one with the fried rice, we thought, you know what? We're not the steakhouse hibachi cooks, but this is simple backyard fried rice and it is so good, but we have some tips that we want to share with you of how we do it. It's so good, you may think that you are a hibachi right. chef. Right, right, get to the groceries though because we're putting a lot into this one. All right, here we go. First of all, we uh, overnight last night, we made this this rice. Oh, yeah. You do want dated old fried oh, rice. That'll be one of the tips Adam will talk yes. about. We're we're using chicken, we're using shrimp. We've got this little medley of peas and carrots. We've got the uh, sesame seeds and we're using sweet soy sauce as well as a couple of eggs and onions too. Right, like Brett said, in fact, we'll talk about it. The very first tip that we would give you is to dry out your fried rice beforehand. A lot of times people wonder why the fried rice is mushy. It's because it is still wet straight out of the cooker. Now you can do it. Sure. It's just you're more likely to have mushy fried rice if you don't dry it out. So we put it in the fridge. We cooked this the night before. This is just two cups of rice uh, pre-cooked. And then we've got it out on our cookie sheet right now. And we'll put it right from the griddle here. And it is dried Completely out. Dried out yep. And so this will help us with fried rice. But Brett, let's get to the griddle so people can see it. We'll get to some of the next tips. Now out at the griddle, the first thing we're gonna do is because we're gonna start with our rice, which by the way is what we do. We've got the griddle setting. We've got three of the burners on low. We can control and change the temps as needed. And so while this is on, we like to give this some flavor. So a tip that we learned actually from Jet Tila was getting the butter. And then you know what? You want that flavor, gonna add a little bit of garlic with it just to kind of start cooking that garlic up. Now, you don't want it to start browning or getting black because once the garlic's burned, you too end up losing all that. But with the butter, it will help it just get cooked up, get some flavor, and it's gonna help with the overall flavor of the rice. There you go. And we get the rice right on it. All right, so you can see some of that garlic mixing in there. So here's the deal, the griddle is on medium low. Now this griddle does get hot, so we are gonna fry it, but we are gonna move it. See, Brett's gonna break up those chunks. Uh, that we, Obviously they got a little clumpy as it was uh, drying out, but we'll break this all up, and you see it starts to individualize pretty quickly. So as he's doing this, we'll get to the next phase and show you our next tip. Brett, as we're giving tips, we actually forgot one of our tips, which we are frying rice. So we are gonna need a little bit of oil just to help. Little. Because we are using the butter, but we don't need much. Uh, this is really just to help kind of get like, well, if you're doing a fry, you need oil to fry in. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little bit to help with the actual fry of the rice. rice. All right, so step two, and this is just how Brett prefers it, and he pointed it out anytime we go to a Japanese steakhouse. This is how they do it. They do the egg next. We'll get our eggs cooking. As soon as those cook, we'll break them up, and then we'll just, there you go. <laughs> then we'll add it all together and toss it Oh, in. you know what I'm gonna do right now, too? What's that? Salt and pepper, by the way. So season early, season often. Now, I did get one tip. And this, we'll have a bunch of side tips, a, yeah. a part of our five tips. One uh, tip that I, uh, that I got from a hibachi chef is you use like soy sauce or what we're using sweet soy sauce for color, salt and pepper for taste. There you go. There you go. All right, there you go. <laughs> We've got our eggs in there. We've got our rice still cooking. Next, the thing is, is it's all about order of operations, right, Brett? Now, sometimes we do the, do the veggies, but Brett pointed out it's really when we're looking at fresh vegetables mm -hmm. that you want to because they're gonna take a little bit longer. Yeah, like the zucchini are, has a lot of right. water in now, it. Now, our veggies are from frozen, so they do need a little bit of time on there to heat up and kind of cook through a little bit. But let's go ahead and get the chicken going next. And this is a tip too that we got. It, it, we used to actually always cube up our chicken beforehand, but then somebody said, you know what? You may as well just get it and get a good sear on it and then cut it, pull it off and cut it afterwards. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the and cook this. Yeah, we got now we got little fillets. If this were full, if these were full pieces, we, we would definitely make sure that we um, hammer these down to get them as flat as possible. All we're gonna do is cook them now. It is on low. 
So I'm bringing this griddle up just a little bit. We just want a little bit of sear on it. We're not looking for a lot. And then we will cut this down before we add it to our uh, fried rice. Now, you can cook it in the chunks like we've done a lot of times just, uh -huh. to, just to save on time. But this was a tip that I thought was pretty good. Get a little extra flavor on that. And then we'll salt and pepper the other side when it's done as well. And Brett, now would be a good time to actually go ahead and get the veggies thrown on over here. All right, veggies are going next. And I put the onions in the back. Now the onions are fresh, so we'll go ahead and get those. We, we prefer the dice in our fried rice. And by the way, Brett, yes? can we make the point? What's that? There are hundreds of different ways to cook fried rice, correct? Yeah, there's a thousand this, ways to skin a cat. Yes. So. <laughs> and so this is just our way of doing this. And this is what we've learned along the way, taking tips and tricks from others. But this is how we've gotten it. And uh, this has always just tasted so amazing. All right, Brett, so now that it's turned, we'll go ahead and salt and pepper everything. And then we'll get some MSG. MSG. What's that next? What's that point about that, Brett? Monosodium glutamate. It is flavor. It, it is, is. It is flavor. And what did we? What were we reading about? It is way a lot less sodium than salts. Yes, we are using salts. Got a rap in the '60s. A bad rap in the '60s because a Chinese American doctor. Ate, he went out and ate at a Chinese restaurant, and afterwards, the next day, he was feeling really bad. He figured it was either all the alcohol he consumed, or it had to have been the MSG in the food, and that stigma stuck just because of that one night that or the day that he woke up and he said he had a bad experience. Must have been the MSG was not the case. Right. So disclaimer also, if you have an allergy or you shouldn't have an MSG, if it does make you feel lousy, don't have MSG. But from a medical standpoint, more and more research has come out that MSG is fine. MSG is used in many, many Asian dishes and we love it for the additional flavor that it gives. It's a flavor enhancer. We like it. We'll post some of the research that we have down below as well in case you are concerned. It still is something that we, uh, we, uh, we address all the time. But we just want to say for us a tip for flavor out of the MSG is, is pretty much a must. All right, so we get a little salt and pepper and it can be used to replace the salt, but uh, we actually like it as, like we said, a flavor enhancer. So there's our MSG. Little goes a long way. Yep, there we go. All right, so next we're gonna get our soy sauce in there. There's our ABC sweet soy sauce. All right, start to get some of the flavors. We love the ABC sweet soy sauce. All right, so since the chicken is, is starting to cook, we're able to actually just take our um, spatula and kind of cut through it. Just break this up, we'll cut this down and break that up and then we can start adding flavor to that and then we'll get our shrimp on, which is our last part of this cook. Okay, so that still needs to cook through. All right, we'll let it keep cooking through. Perfect, perfect. All right, so now we'll add some flavor to the chicken, which also means it's time to get on the shrimp. So the, our final tip for the fried rice, Brett, yep. is to do the shrimp last. If you're cooking shrimp, get it on last. Your proteins, you got to know the order. If you're doing steak, depending on how you want it, we usually start with chicken, then we'll go steak, and then shrimp is always mm -hmm. last. Because chicken, you have to make sure it cooks all the way through. Steak, you can have it medium, rare, medium, whatever you want. Shrimp cooks so fast, which is why we do it last. So I'm actually going to bring the chicken over here. Yep, you can even add the veggies now at this point. And by the, by the way, this burner where the rice is, is has been turned yep. off. We turned that off. So what's steaming now is just the um, soy sauce, the ABC sweet soy sauce. We got the veggies mixed in. We've got that chicken great. mixed in. It looks amazing, man. <laughs> it smells amazing, I'm right over it. Okay, so now last step, like we said, let's get the shrimp and all we're gonna do, a little salt, little pepper, little MSG, and then the soy sauce. And then we'll marry it and we'll hit it all with one more hit of the sweet soy sauce. Wanna clean this area first. All right. Let's get the shrimp on. So we're gonna lay the butter down for our shrimp. All right, little garlic. So we're gonna go ahead and get the shrimp on. Sorry. When, when you're cooking shrimp, you do want it on hot because you wanna make sure that that shrimp is gonna cook through. I mean, it, it's gonna cook through, but it just helps the higher heat to really get through. And there we go, starts to orange and curl up. The shrimp is done when it's curled up. And then we'll, oh, it smells so good. It does. Want to hit it with some soy sauce or you just want to pull it in and then I we'll get it all I want to wait till it's cooked a little bit and then, uh, yeah. So we use just a little bit of sesame oil. A little, a little bit goes, goes a long, long way. way. 
There you go. And that's all it is. It's about a tablespoon, a teaspoon rather, and a half of soy, of uh, sesame, sesame oil. oil. And that's just really going to give it that nice little Asian, Asian kick. Uh -huh. All right, Brent, I'd go ahead and pull over your shrimp. And then hit it all one more time with ABC sweet soy sauce, maybe a little bit of everything. Yep. And ladies and gentlemen, that's a heaping mess of deliciousness right that there. That is wonderful. Hit it one more time with this deliciousness. One thing I love about this ABC sweet soy sauce is uh, you can use it generously. It just adds flavor. It's, it takes a lot to d overdo it with uh -huh. this stuff. Like so. with soy sauce, you can definitely do too much soy sauce. Yeah, the ABC but with the sweet, sweet soy, soy sauce, sauce, for some reason, much. Yeah, it's kind of like chocolate syrup there you on go. a brownie. There Never you go. too much. Right? Never too much. All right, Brett, I think we got it. We got our tips. Let's go ahead and taste it and see how we did. Let's do it. Well, we're running out of battery life on the camera, and man, there it is in all its glory. This is so awesome. I, mean, I can't wait to dig in. Brett, like we say, it can look amazing. This looks absolutely amazing. We love doing this. Like we say, it can smell amazing. Oh, yeah. If I haven't said it, can I get a smell yet? Smell, yeah, you can. <laughs> but if it doesn't taste amazing, this is all for naught. Oh, you're getting a little bit of everything on there. Not that right, girlfriend. I got a big old bite, apparently. Cheers. I'll eat to that. My, My brother. brother. Mm. You go it, man. That is mm. so good. It's so good and so easy to make. You really can use any seasoning sauces that you like. Regular soy sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Adam did not want sesame oil on this. And at one right. point I was like, do you know what this is missing? It's sesame oil. He said, you know what, let's just put a little bit. You saw the little bit that we put. Usually I'll put a little bit of sesame oil in each thing that I cook. Right. I've, I've over sesame oiled before, so I'm always very yes. careful you with the sesame go, oil. So that's, I guess, far. final tip. Like we said, use sesame oil, use it sparingly. Uh huh. Love it though, this turned out exactly like it always does. It's so good, I can't wait to take this home and share that share with the family for sure. I know they're gonna love this. Man, the only thing that I would've done different, we talked about it. Uh, these were bigger shrimp, I would've uh -huh. cut the shrimp down. We yep. you're usually are we're used to the smaller shrimp, mm -hmm. that's great. If uh, you've had success with fried rice, make sure and comment below, let us know how it went, or if you had any questions or issues, hopefully these tips helped you out. Yep. If they did or you enjoyed this video just cause you know, you enjoy the video of hanging out with us, make sure to give it a, a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. It's one way in which you can support us in what we do. Another way you can support us is by purchasing one of our two amazing cookbooks. We say amazing cause we're just honored that they're out and yes. uh, Quarto Group did such a great so job. Fun, yeah. The Epic Outdoor Griddle Cookbook and Smashed. Smashed, both available on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. I say it, I'll say it again, love that we get to come and do this. I love it more than uh, more than life itself. Right, aside from coming and knocking out bangers like the chicken and shrimp, shrimp fried, fried rice, rice while, simple fried rice, simple fried rice, while giving some amazing tips. Why else do we do this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter, matter what. what. With that, we bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on.